Hi guys, and welcome back to another TechMinds video. So in this video, we have a rather cool gadget to show you, and this is called the Power Nanny. Essentially, this is an HF power meter, which gets installed between your radio and your antenna, or even between your radio and a dummy load if you wish. It supports an operating frequency range of between 1 MHz up to 30 MHz and power levels from 5 watts to 100 watts with 125 being absolute maximum. The Power Nanny can be powered via a USB-C socket or a JST socket which can take a voltage range from 6 to 9 volts. To view the forward power and calculated SWR, the Power Nanny hosts its own web server which runs on a Wi-Fi enabled ESP module. Now I'll show you the configuration later in the video. Now the case appears to be a custom made case using aluminium and 3D printed parts. And notice at the bottom there, there's a rounded section which is specifically designed to protect the Wi-Fi antenna of that internal ESP module. Two SO239 sockets are installed, one to connect to your transceiver and the other to connect to your antenna. Now, as well as providing a web page from its internal web server, an M5 stack display can actually be also paired for local viewing without a computer. Now on the bottom and when powered up, you can see a couple of status LEDs, one which shows when power is supplied and the other is for network connection. Also on the bottom side, next to the USB-C socket and the JST power socket, you'll find a boot option button and a reset button. Now this is useful if you need to reset the ESP module without having to disassemble the Power Nanny itself. As the Power Nanny uses Wi-Fi, either as an ad hoc connection to your phone or computer, it can also be configured to connect to your home local network. If your home network has an internet connection, then there's a feature you can enable called Look Who's Talking. This will show a map of all Power Nannies that are currently online and it will also show the status of that power nanny. Information shown on the map will include the configured call sign, date and time of last transmitted, and a frequency of the last band that was used. Now this is all detected from the RF sensing on the power nanny itself. Now this can be disabled within setup if you don't want to share your data with others using this feature. Okay, so let's hook it up and let me show you how to configure it. Now I'm just going to set it up like this in my shack or my desk close to my radio. However, you could install this anywhere within your antenna coax run. Of course, this is not waterproof, but you could install it into an external box if you wanted to install it nearer the antenna feed point. Now here I have the radio connected to the left, which is going to the TX port and the right side SO239 then goes off to my NFED half-wave antenna which of course is installed outside. Now to power this, I'm just using a USB-C cable plugged into a power supply. Once the power nanny is powered on for the first time, use a computer or mobile phone to connect to its ad hoc Wi-Fi. That should appear as power nanny. Once connected, open a browser on your phone or computer and head to powernanny.local. You'll then be prompted to configure Wi-Fi so that it will connect to your local Wi-Fi connection, assuming that you actually want to do this. Now this is quite easy as it will scan for local Wi-Fi's. You just need to select your Wi-Fi SSID and then enter its password. Now once connected, the Power Nanny will reboot and you should be able to connect to it from your computer that's actually connected to your home network. Once you have the Power Nanny's web page open on your computer within a browser, the first thing I would suggest would be to check if there's been a firmware update released. Simply press the top right button and from the drop down on the left, select firmware. Press the flash firmware button and it will download the latest firmware and install it. Now the Power Nanny will most likely reboot, so just wait for it to come back online. Under the general tab within settings, you can also change how the power meter responds to power. You can select the power meter to show average power or peak power with a peak sample time adjustment for the max hold. If you want to share your device's details with the online map I mentioned a moment ago, head to the station page within the settings and enter your call sign. 
You can then also enter a brief shared message, maybe information about your setup. Now your location can be entered either as a latitude and longitude, or you can just enter your grid square for a general position. The share your TX activity tick box must be ticked for your device's data to be shared to the map server. Incidentally, the data passed between the power nanny and the web server is encrypted. More information can be found about that on the power nanny's website. Okay, so with everything configured, here is my setup. We have the power nanny web page on the left, the screen from my FT710 on the bottom right, and on the top right, we're looking at the Look Who's Talking web page. Now, right in the middle is the icon which shows my station, and when I start to transmit, the icon will flash red. You'll also notice the parameter levels start to increase and decrease as I talk on SSB. Mike Zero, Delta, Quebec Whiskey calling CQ and listening over. An estimated frequency will be shown, and that's sensed from the power nanny itself. And below that, there's the SWR reading. Also on the display, just above the power reading, there's two further measurements. Now these are for the controller's temperature and the coupler's temperature. You'll also notice a history plot start to draw itself as you start transmitting. Now this information is also captured elsewhere, which we'll look at in a moment. If you tap the top left button on the Power Nanny's webpage, you can select Captured from the drop down. You'll then have a list of captured transmissions, which records the forward power, the reflected power with SWR. Now you can also export this data to a CSV file, which of course you can then open in applications like Excel or start to build a database if you wish. Now one last thing to mention, and that is about the HTTP API. Now the developer of the Power Nanny has provided details on their website regarding the HTTP API that can be used so you can create your own software to pull live data from the Power Nanny while it's in use. But this means you can integrate things like Node-RED, which of course can be also used as a shack control panel. With the HTTP API exposed and documented, programmers and tinkerers within the ham radio community will pretty much be tickled by that. I believe these kind of features really start to get innovators of the hobby thinking and tinkering on how they can integrate this data with their everyday life applications. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching. And of course, I'll leave a link down in the video description of where you can go and check out this product and find out more about it and also links to where you can purchase it from. Until the next video, take care and I'll see you in the next one. Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey, M Zero DQW calling CQ, CQ, CQ. Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey calling CQ and listening over.